And the big announcement was made by Tony Khan at the beginning of the Dynamite show tonight. They have purchased Ring of Honor. Not just the tape library. They've purchased Ring of Honor. Tony Khan now owns Ring of Honor video library and everything else. And Did you notice when he, when he made the announcement, he said that Shane's not swooping in? Yes, he did say that. Yes, so he tried to copy that uh, famous Vince thing in 2001. So, I mean, the purchase of the uh, tape library, you know, obviously makes all the sense in the world. Um, you know, a couple of notes on that. Obviously, if uh, Sinclair was looking at selling that. So, so here, here's the situation. And, um, originally, when remember, if you remember back when they made the uh, announcement and told all the wrestlers that their contracts weren't going to be renewed, but they were coming back in April. And they were going to stay on TV, and the company's going to continue, but everyone's contract, everyone's going to be a free agent. So when they did that, um, Justin Barrasso reported that the tape library was up for sale. So I remember asking Tony Khan, actually that day, um, and I said, like, I figured if it's up for sale, there's two people who they're going to sell it to. It's either going to be WWE or it's going to be AEW. So I asked Tony Khan, like... Uh, you know, you is you hear it's up for sale, and he said no, it's not. He has not heard anything about that. So I figured that it was not up for sale because if it was, he would know. And then a couple of weeks later, I did hear more that it was up for sale, and I asked him again. He didn't give me an answer. So then I knew I didn't know anything, but I, it was more likely at that point that, in fact, at that point, it was up for sale. So th this deal was put together. Um, basically two weeks ago on Thursday um, and or at least it was mostly put together by Thursday I don't know if it was what, when it was actually finalized but obviously it was the next day on that Friday of uh, two weeks ago um, he said that he was uh, pretty confident in it um, that something was going to happen and then later last week made the announcement that he was going to announce it on the show that the deal was basically done. So, um, obviously both WWE and AEW, um, were contacted when the idea was to sell the company and AEW was the one that obviously made the better offer of the two and got the company. Um, as far as what this this means going forward, I don't know. I mean, the tape library is is very valuable to AEW because they want to do you know some sort of a streaming service. Whether they sell something to HBO Max or they do their own streaming service in some form, um, that amount of library with with a lot of wrestlers, including you know one of the keys to that library is is you know Ring of Honor owned the All In Show, which is an important part of the. Um, history of you know AEW is that show so and also it had you know all kinds of tapes of Brian Danielson and you know a lot of other wrestlers you know the Young Bucks and you know some of Kenny Omega um, Jay Lethal you know I mean up and down the roster there's a ton of footage that they could use of those different people all right, we had a small glitch. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Dave, you were talking about uh, having footage of guys like Danielson. I mean, you know, just not just Danielson, but, um, you know, Young Bucks and um, Jay Lethal and so many guys. You know, I think that they said there's like 40 guys on the roster that have worked in Ring of Honor, um, some number like that. Um, and Matt, you know, um, Claudio, if they get Claudio, and, you know, just so many others. So, I mean, but the tape library is very, very valuable. As far as running Ring of Honor as a separate organization, um, you know, if, you know, again, I mean, Tony Khan's not a dummy, so I'm sure he's got a battle plan. I don't know what the battle plan is for it, so it's really, I really don't want to comment too much. I only know history, and history will tell you this. Um I mean, it, it, on, on the surface, this is why it makes no sense to me to run Ring of Honor as a separate group. Right now, they don't do house shows with um, AEW because they're not cost effective for AEW in their minds. So they don't do it. Um, 
a house show with Ring of Honor, you know, Ring of Honor house shows have also not been cost effective because if they were, Sinclair wasn't, wouldn't be looking to unload them because if they were making them money, there's no reason to unload them. Um, you know, I mean, Sinclair doesn't need any losses. That, that RSN deal has just been a disaster for Sinclair. So it's not a surprise that Ring of Honor was cut in, in, the, in that situation. I don't know if they will continue to produce Ring of Honor television on Sinclair, whether the television will be moved somewhere else. That I, that I don't know. Um, hopefully we can get those an that, that answered in uh, the next couple of days. Um, so, but, but if I just look at history, I mean, when I look at, um, you know, I can go through a million different ones but all the highlight ones would be jim crockett buying out uh, bill watts and buying out um or taking over florida and in in those cases in florida it was just a short period of time where he shut down florida because jim crockett promotions would draw more in florida than championship wrestling from florida because they had bigger stars so why call it championship wrestling from florida if you know, it's, it was a dying brand, so to speak. Um, the same thing with Jim Crockett buying uh, the uh, UWF, Bill Watts's promotion. They were going to run them as two separate promotions. They were going to war the promotions. Very quickly, they shut down the Bill, the Bill Watts UWF promotion because it wasn't cost effective. It was a money losing promotion, so it's not cost effective to run it. And the nwa name was going to draw more than actually wasn't not not in the territory actually wouldn't draw more than the uwf name but they felt that running the uwf name uh was not valuable any longer wwe with wcw they were going to run as two separate promotions that lasted uh, one night in to into uh, tacoma and it was done wwe uh later resurrected the ecw brand and then uh stopped it because it wasn't cost effective it wasn't drawing it was a money loser um even with nxt now wwe no longer tours nxt um because they obviously do not feel that they can tour nxt and run separate nst shows with people paying and it being cost effective and in the case of nxt that's a bad one because you've because nxt is all about being developmental and the guys need reps and even wwe would not run a Florida loop or anything. They would not run any paying house shows for NXT right now. The only shows are the ones that they have to do, which are the TVs, and, and they don't even sell tickets to those shows. They just let people in that are friends, you know. So the idea of, you know, I mean, Ring of Honor was not drawing at all, you know, and that's one of the reasons they cut so far back and basically shut, shut the thing down is because it wasn't drawing. If Tony Khan wanted to run shows, he should, you know, like, you know, he might as well use the name AEW. The AEW name is 10 times more valuable than the Ring of Honor name in 2022. The Ring of Honor name hasn't meant anything. There's no cachet to the name. There is cachet to the AEW name. So if he wants to run, let's say, a AEW Developmental, you might as well call it AEW. You're going to sell more tickets if it says AEW than if it says Ring of Honor. So, you know, there's an, there may be nostalgia to the few Ring of Honor fans left. And I'm not saying, you know, I mean, if he wants to run house shows in smaller buildings, you know, I mean, that's fine. Do it, you know, but use the Ring of Honor name that's going to draw more people. Don't use the, A, I mean, the um, AEW name that's going to draw more people, not the Ring of Honor name, because... Ring of Honor was drawn like nobody. I mean, even, you know, even their their last show, um, you know, the the big show of the year was doing like, you know, a thousand people. So, I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, if he wants to run shows, there's ways to do it. But the Ring of Honor brand running shows past television, and maybe it will only be television tapings, but even for television tapings, if you're running a television show, Using the name AEW for your television show versus Ring of Honor, the AEW show is going to be far more effective in drawing viewers. So, um, you know, again, I have no, you know, historically, I mean, and, and, and you know, U UFC tried the same thing with, with well, Pride was a, was a different issue. But when UFC purchased Strikeforce, if you remember, they were going to run it as a separate 
company and and they tried and very quickly you know it was the same thing it's like why are we running this company with the name strike force when a strike force show is going to draw so much less than a ufc show we might as well take the talent and merge it and call it ufc and make more money i mean that's the reality the reality is is why run a show with a brand name that is so inferior when you can just use your own brand name that you own. You own the AEW name. That's like, that's a, a you know, a, a st as strong a brand as there is in modern pro wrestling, except for the name WWE. Okay, it's the second strongest brand name. Ring of Honor is not even today in the United States. Ring of Honor would be below Impact. It would be below GCW. It would be below New, J below New Japan. Um you know, I, I don't think there's anyone else who would be necessarily below because there's nobody else that's the key. But it's like, why run? I mean, you know, yeah, you can build up the Ring of Honor brand to a degree, but no matter what you do with the Ring of Honor brand, if you run a show, if you're going to come to Seattle, Washington, and you're going to put Jay Lethal, and you're going to put um, Lee Moriarty, and you're going to put, um, you know, maybe a couple of bigger names like, um, you know, let's just say uh, Santana and Ortiz, um, you know, maybe FTR, guys like that, and you come to Seattle, Washington, and you call the show Ring of Honor, you're going to draw maybe 400 people, you know, maybe. You bring that same crew, and you call it AEW, you're going to draw maybe 1,500 people. I don't know. Why do it then? I think it'd be closer to uh, 1,000 and 2,000, but I get your point. They're not going to draw 1,000 people with a Ring of Honor name. Well, I mean, There's not 1,000, no... but uh, I mean, they did like 800, 850, 900 for uh, New Japan Strong. New Japan's a stronger name than Ring of Honor in the United States. Well, Much sure, stronger. if you were doing the, the New Japan proper. But, but uh, even, New, even New Japan Strong was selling far more tickets than Ring of Honor was. New Japan Strong was, you know, and, and New Japan Strong sold... Um, Oh, what was the number? 580, I think, was the number that they actually drew? Well, I guess the other question here would be, uh, as the old saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. And uh, there were people involved with both major companies that uh, for the last several days were talking about HBO Max. I heard it over and over again. And well, uh, that was that was um... no announcement, nothing. Well, yeah, um, I would think that, um, you know, I mean, actually, HBO Max is an interesting story because just today, I believe, or yesterday, you know, HBO Max had done no live sports at all. That was not part of their, their thing. But they just, done, you know, Turner, Warner Media just signed a deal with the U.S. national soccer team. So it's the men's team and the women's team. Uh, to do, I believe, like 20 games a year that they, that they're playing, like World Cup qualifiers and stuff, not the World Cup itself, but it was a 25, 27 million dollar a year deal that they signed. And all of the games will air live on HBO Max. So it's the first live sports that HBO Max has done. So now the door is opened for live sports. And yeah, I mean, um, it's part of the Warner Media family. It makes sense. It would help HBO Max. They just bought a video library. They just bought I a mean, video Tony library. I mean, Tony Khan talked today about a video library when he did that conference call, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Well, so so the thing is, um, like I said, the ta the the as far as like the value of that video library. I mean, it's not like when when you know in the past where you can go in there and you're going to be selling a whole bunch of DVDs. You know, you can make best of. Brian Danielson in the early years, DVDs, right? You can't really do that now. But what you can do with that video library, obviously, is put the matches up. You can um, you can do like a Brian Danielson career retrospective and go from like 2002 to whatever it was when he left Ring of Honor, um, late 2000s. Um, and that whole run when he was champion and all those freaking awesome matches and everything that he's done that he did there. I mean, you can you can do shows like that. You can put the Ring of Honor shows up. You've got your own library of you know some great great pay per view shows, some um, you know tremendous television shows. Um, 
you know, and, uh, you know, some house shows and things as well. So obviously there should be either a, a AW streaming service or sell the idea of a streaming service to an HBO max. And, you know, I mean, one of the things that would make sense is to run occasional, you know, I, I think from an HBO max standpoint, um, running live, uh, AEW shows, you know, maybe like, um, you know, whether it's something to the effect of, uh, clash, I mean, the, um, battle of the belts, right? Where maybe you do two hours on HBO max and then a third hour simulcast between HBO max and TNT. So you're getting like a real three hour show rather than this one hour thing that's that nobody considers a big show because it's one hour you know or maybe one saturday every other, every month or every other month you do run a house show and you do put it on live on hbo max and you have that library and everything like that yeah i mean um you know i don't know where hbo max is coming from and what their mentality is when it comes to wrestling but um you know and obviously hbo max is not overpaying like peacock because they're not a billion dollars in the red in one year but there's still, you know, there's still a, a the idea of buying it at, at the real value as opposed to the crazy value that they value that WWE made that great great deal for WWE when they sold everything to Peacock. But you can sell it at your at your at you know what is a reasonable thing, and it's still, you know, a good deal for AW. Now another part of this, the fact you know, and I don't know what the purchase price is for the library and and the the intellectual property rights, but. Um, you know, it's it's probably not a tiny number. It's probably a significant number. Number one, because it was a tiny number, WWE would have gone higher and gotten it, and they didn't. So, you know, it's it's a number that WWE wouldn't wouldn't go to. You know, you know that. So, what that tells me also is that any of this talk that you know when they lost Cody Rhodes, that you know, oh my God, you know they're running low on money, and you know all that stuff that that WWE was trying to tell its talent, what what the Cody Rhodes thing meant. And obviously, he spent he just spent a lot of money on a new acquisition, um, so they're not you know it's not like that they're like all of a sudden that they're there's these you know giant budget constraints and it's a deal the library deal should pay off over the course of years you know especially if they sell the streaming service this is a long game it's not a short game maybe they won't sell it this this week or this month uh maybe they'll start their own and now they have more content to start their own um the library deal is a, is is a good deal for for it would have been a good deal for either side to get it's a valuable library um a lot of great matches as far as running the brand, I mean, WWE, there's no way they would have run the brand. You know, there's no way. Um, but, um, and, and WWE, um, also, you know, I'm, it was, you know, when the, when, when Ring of Honor was kind of hot, I, I think this would be, I'm going to say 2018, early part of the year, WWE made a pitch, you know, or they, 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 Levesque, Paul Levesque wanted to buy, ring of honor and um you know there was there was some smoke to that even though ring of honor you know obviously denied it at the time because you always do but there was something there there were talks there and then they ended up going nowhere from what i gather vince um vince wanted to buy somebody bigger you know um not realizing that the bigger which was new japan pro wrestling he couldn't buy and you know they tried to you know WWE tried to buy new japan they tried to buy stardom they tried to buy noah um, there might have been another one or two in there. Um, they tried to buy AAA, but nobody would sell to them um, from foreign countries um, at the price that they were willing to pay. So none of these deals ever got going. But this is one, obviously, that was in play and, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but but at the time, you know, like, uh, so they were not willing to sell then. But now, you know, Sinclair, again, those RSN, the, the regional sports network deals. Um, were such a big loser when Sinclair bought him from Fox. And so now, yeah, they were, you know, they can't keep on, or they, don't, they didn't, you know, they could, but they didn't want to keep on a, a company that was not making them money. So yeah, that's, that's what led to all this. So if you're wondering what it was, I mean, there was two things. Number one, once, you know, uh, AEW started, the value of Ring of Honor dropped 
greatly. Their drawing power dropped greatly. Um, you know, all their business dropped. Um, so other than their streaming, their streaming business. So actually, they got a streaming service. You know, actually, Tony bought a streaming service. You know, the Honor Club. So he's, he does have that. He could revamp that, rename that, and he's already got it. And he's even got some subscribers to start with if, if you want to build from that. And that actually makes sense, too. You might as well do something with it while, you know, until you make that sale. And then if you don't make the sale, that's fine. I don't see them making the move of putting their pay-per-views on um, the streaming service. They may, but they've, they've, you know, they're making a lot of money on pay-per-views right now so um to give that up and you know put it for like a 9.99 price or something like that i don't see them doing that but you know maybe they will um now that they have a streaming service so there's there's a there's literally a million questions um about this but that's um you know like again how are you going to do the shows you know i mean the obviously in a sense it does give the talent more places to work and do more shows and that's a good thing and they should do that i'm just saying that that if you're going to do it you might as well use the AEW brand name you know if you're going to put lee moriarty and dante martin and whoever on 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 shows you might as well call it that and if you're going to do a tv show you might as well call it that because the AEW name is going to get more people to watch television show than the ring of honor name um i mean you accomplish the same thing and in time i think that's probably what's going to happen because that's the same thing that always happens in these sales if you look at them historically nobody ever keeps the smaller company alive with a name because you just use the more famous name and the name itself is a draw is a bigger draw and that's how it, it's how it always ends up um so it's probably how it's going to end up here, too, you know, just because if you think about it logically, that's the logical, that's the logical thing. But I mean, as far as running shows, giving talent more, more opportunities to wrestle, especially the younger guys, of course, I would love to see them run more shows. The only thing is, is like just with the same with WWE. Um, it's not considered cost effective right now. I mean, there's like I said, there's a reason WWE, those people, they know that talent needs more work. They know and they but they won't do it because it's a money losing thing. And, you know, with uh, Levesque gone, um, there was nobody pushing for it. And they just looked at it as a dollars and cents thing and just go like, we can't make money running these little arenas in Florida. And we we can't make money touring this these guys in front of a thousand people and send them all over the, this, the you know, the country with these big shows, you know, in small buildings to draw a thousand people. It doesn't work. It doesn't pay off. So we're not going to do it anymore, even though for the development of talent, you know, um, talent development should not be a profit thing. Because in, in, in anyone, when you're doing um, development, development inherently is considered a money loser. Um, and so in some, you know, so, I mean, there's an argument for Tony Khan to do some shows in small buildings with these guys to develop talent to develop just to give these guys more experience and um even even knowing that you can't make money on that there's certainly an argument for that there's an argument for wwe doing the same thing it was an argument that people had for a long time for wwe when they were losing money on the nxt brand but now you know um wwe is about maximizing profits and perhaps that's short-term thinking time will tell um but they decided against doing it so um anyway that's uh that's the basic situation with the with the deal hopefully uh hopefully by uh the next couple of days we'll hear a lot more about you know what the uh wrestling end of the ring of honor deal means as far as aside from the tape library end hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.